Right. But just before I start, we went to put the links down a wee bit here because um, it's a bit bright in here. But look at the grim, it's just a smell. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if he's happy or just showing me all his teeth. For anyone that doesn't know, you probably know me now, I'm George, and Graham's uncle, the best man. I'm here to tell you about Graham and how truly special, talented, good looking, and can I do this, mate? Can I read your name? Can I read it? <laughs> good afternoon, I hope everyone is having a good time. I feel, I feel very privileged and honoured to be standing here celebrating this lovely union. You can always count on Graham to make a lot of awkward jokes, so needless to say, I've been waiting in this moment for a long time. <laughs> I'm really feeling quite nervous, like I'm on trial here today, because Greg, uh, Graham says, if I do a good job with this speech, I can be best man at his next wedding. <laughs> also, I never thought I actually would go through with this, and that's the married him, so I was holding off right there. <laughs> so, in my research to find out how to deliver a great best man speech, I learned that I'm expected to sing the praises of the groom and tell you what a wonderful guy he is. Unfortunately, I'm neither a good singer nor a good liar. <laughs> so, for that reason, I've decided to keep my, brief, my speech brief. Three, ten pages? Ten pages, that's good women. <laughs> I would like to say well done to the Grace Father Chuck and the Drew for their doing their such a brilliant job on their speeches. I'd also like to thank the bridesmaids, Lauren, Kayla, Pamela and Alex for not only looking, at, looking so radiant, but for having the right to get ready earlier and calming her nerves. <laughs> also, there's an unwritten rule of wedding etiquette that no, says nobody should look more handsome than the groom. I'd like to thank ushers for sticking to that. <laughs> Actually, I just, want, I just want to say to you, you, you look absolutely stunning today. And, the, and although we have thought of you as a member of the family for such a long time now, it's an honour that today has been made official. Welcome to the clan. God tell you. I thought it's a rough year. I'd also like to congratulate the groom on his excellent taste in best man. He's really outdone himself there. <laughs> on a serious note, Graham wanted to Graham wanted to me to thank Ashley for purely showing up today. It means more than you could ever know. <laughs> Page four. On behalf of the newlyweds, I would like to thank everyone for attending their amazing celebration. Can I just say how well everyone here looked this afternoon? Not that I expected the last night of the wine and vodka zone, but still. I'd like to extend our deepest gratitude to the couple's parents for raising such amazing people who are fortunate enough to call family. I would like to raise a toast thanking their parents, Carol and James. Sharon and Graham for hosting such a wonderful celebration for all, us to all enjoy this evening. The parents. That's just an excuse for me to get a drink. <laughs> now, the bride and groom have asked me that I don't share any embarrassing stories or crude jokes in my best man speech, so that's me done for the day. Thanks for listening. But I'm only on page five now. <laughs> Happy, happy. I have many great memories with Graham. Like how, as a small boy, he was really scared of the film Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> he used to sit up on his grand shoulder, hiding. And when he was a baby, for some reason, don't know why, I was trusted to look after him when his mum and dad went to work. I seen him be sick, wet himself, and cry himself to sleep, but that was just last night. 
I'll take some responsibility in being to blame for Graham's taste in music. We developed a great bond, not a flute bond, <laughs> but, but a close bond. We share a mutual interest in the Ugandan Volleyball Federation. We always did quite a lot together, usually, usually involving the coming <laughs> and annoying each other. I know you can tell we still do that, but I'm setting the scene here. I must admit, I feel like a bit of frost standing here as the best man. Not many folk will know this, but sadly, I'm the set choice for this role. And I'm quite upset that I will be standing here in the shadow of the first choice. You see, Graham used to have a best pal called Jimmy. <laughs> now, try as you may, you can look around this room and you'll never see Jimmy. That's, that's because Jimmy was Graham's imaginary friend. <laughs> I, I remember taking Graham to the cinema when he was a small boy and I've insisted that seat was left so that Jimmy could sit between us. And he's done it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a rumour going about that Graham always has to be right. I don't think that's a rumour, but I didn't get the last word done. <laughs> So it came as no surprise to me when one day I heard Graham arguing with himself and thinking, typical Graham, couldn't he just have imaginary friends? Has to have imaginary enemies as well. <laughs> Things haven't changed much. I also work with Graham. And some of our workmates, workmates are here today and can turn out his nickname at work as a god. This is true, due to the fact that he makes his own rules and if he does any work it's a miracle. <laughs> But later down the line, as far as we know, Jimmy eventually left the picture. And I remember hearing Graham listen to his favourite song, The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. Being the good, good uncle that I am, I remember telling him how at the age of 23, he was old before his time. Start to go grey and bald. By the way, you should have, you should have got two for one deal in Turkey. So, I said to him, you should see the world and meet the perfect woman, and in 2013, the dates might be a wee bit there, but, but Graham ventured to the bright lights outside the old, old Irish school. So when he told us he met a girl, everyone was delighted, but my first thought, thought was, fuck me, has Jimmy got a sister? <laughs> You've ever been to Leslie? <laughs> I don't, it didn't help when he says he met her in Leslie in Glen Office, but I don't know if any of you have ever, ever been to Leslie. But the hills of eyes and the people are six toes. I'll tell you how bad it is. By that point, I was praying it was Jimmy's wee sister. <laughs> Thankfully, it was Ashley, and I can hand in my heart say Ashley's the prettiest girl ever to come out of Glen Office. <laughs> Mind you, I did let out a big sigh of relief when I heard she was actually for faultus. <laughs> Don't know if that's much better, but hey ho. <laughs> In all seriousness, <laughs> everyone here knows Ashley will be aware that she is a wonderful person who deserves a good husband. Well, thank fuck Graham married her before she found one. <laughs> Hi, today, today was a wonderful day, but I don't know if any of you know this, but Ashley originally wanted a winter wedding in the snow, but she was really worried that it would be ruined if it was just icy and not snowy at all. She thought long and hard about it, now we guarantee the snow would lay thick, but wanted to make her happy, Graham kept telling her not to worry, leave it with him, he promised, he'd make it happen. But wouldn't you know it was Chuck, the one who put a stop to the winter wedding? But once he heard Graham promising Ashley she'd wake up to six inches in the morning, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> G 
agree on. As someone who's been there and done it, I've some advice for you. First off, remember that marriage is not just an eight-letter word. It's an entire sentence. Although you probably get much less for murder. <laughs> Secondly, if at first you don't succeed, try and do it the way your wife told you in the first place. And finally, always remember that a man is incomplete until he's married. After that, he's finished. <laughs> Every great relationship starts with rings. In the beginning, the phone would ring, and just the thought of speaking to each other was exciting. Your love grew, and so did your commitment to each other. You heard the doorbell ring when you moved in together, then the engagement ring soon came after in 2016. There were no doubts your love was true. The engagement ring has now turned into a wedding ring, and we're all here to celebrate your marriage. Now, of course, the suffering begins. <laughs> But, but really, Graham and Ashley, I'd like to say this to you as you start your new journey together. Graham, always treat Ashley like the queen that she is. And Ashley, always remember that Graham loves you and could not do it without you. Seriously, I've seen him without you, it's a mess. <laughs> I'd also like to wish Graham and Ashley all the best in their future. I know they enjoy their honeymoon in North Wales. At least I think that's what they meant when they said he was going to Bangor for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you can all please stand and raise a toast. <laughs> to the right, to the riding room, Mr. and Mrs. McMahon. For going to know her. Oh, thanks. That's all right.